Hey, Tim Frisch with the Frisch Perspective. I like to talk about Bible translation on my channel. And uh, so I decided I would do a comparison of the English Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible. And uh, this video is titled, Why the ESV is Better Than the NASB. Now, I know when some of you see that title, you're freaking out about it. You're, you're really, uh, maybe really angry that I would say that uh, because you love the NASB. Uh, others of you, you love the ESV, so you have no problem with me saying that. But I just want to make a clarification right off the bat. Uh, this is actually one of two videos that I'm going to do, particularly comparing the ESV and the NASB. And what happened is I saw a video of someone on YouTube comparing the iPhone operating system with the Android operating system. And they did two videos. One was why the iPhone is better than Android. And then they did another video why the Android operating system is better than iPhone. So you get the idea that they're really just showing two sides. And I thought that's a really good way to, to just bring out the differences when you're comparing two different things. And uh, so why not do that with the English Standard Version and the New American Standard Bible? Because in reality, these are two very similar translations. Uh, they're both more word-for-word -word translations. They're both scholarly. They're both conservative and uh, loved by many evangelicals. Uh, so we're going to talk about the differences between the English Standard Version in the New American Standard Bible in this video and the next video that I do in follow-up. Uh, but in this video I want to highlight some of the good things about the English Standard Version and why you might say it's better than the NASB, at least in these areas. Now the first one, and all of these by the way, are really just my opinion and subjective to some degree, but the first one is that the ESV is better in that it reads more traditionally which is kind of nice. Uh, really the ESV is in a line uh, from the King James Version and uh, they consciously try to retain more classic language, traditional ways of wording things that you see historically in Bibles. So the English Standard Version just kind of has more of that traditional feel to it when you read it. However, uh, it is updated English and scholarship so you get the best of both worlds. You get that traditional sounding phrasing in many ways, but you get updated terminology and uh, it's actually not too hard to understand even though it kind of has a more traditional feel to it. So those are some good things about the ESV. But just to give you some examples here, kind of showing you how the ESV is a little bit more like the King James and its wording. Let's start with Psalm 23. And I really just want to focus here on a couple verses. I'm actually uh, putting up three translations here so you can see how they compare. You've got the King James Version on the left, the English Standard Version in the middle, and the New American Standard Bible on the right. If you get to the end of Psalm 23, verse 5 in the ESV says, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That sounds a lot like the King James Version, if you're familiar with the King James Version in those verses. But if you look now at uh, Psalm 23, 5 and 6 in the New American Standard, it's a little bit different. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So a little bit of wording change there. Another example is in the Sermon on the Mount. And again, the English Standard Version sounds so much like the King James. Uh, and in verse 5 it says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The New American Standard Bible says, Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Then if you go down to verse 12, it says in the English Standard Version, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And in the New American Standard, Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is in heaven is great, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So that phrasing there in the ESV, for so they persecuted, 
If you go to the King James, it says, for so they persecuted. In the New American Standard, it says, in the same way they persecuted. So these are just little nitpicky things, but I think you can see in those examples that the English Standard Version pretty closely follows the King James wording in many ways, even to the point of using language maybe in a little bit different way than we tend to use it. Uh, but a lot of people like that. So that's a nice thing about the English Standard Version is its use of traditional language while still being current. Number two, the ESV is great in that it reads more smoothly than the NASB. And again, this is subjective to some degree. A lot of people who are used to the New American Standard Bible think it reads just fine. They're used to it, they love it. And uh, there's no problem with that. But generally speaking, uh, people have pointed out that the English Standard Version does kind of have a better literary quality to it in English. And in my experience, I feel that the English Standard Version does read a bit more smoothly when I'm going through both of them. Uh, there have been times when I'm reading the New American Standard Bible that I've just read something that really kind of stuck out awkwardly to me. And it could be that I'm just so used to the King James and, and some of the wording there uh, that I'm not used to be things being worded differently. But I think you can objectively say in certain cases the New American Standard Bible does has some phrasing that's trying so hard to follow the original wording of, of the original language that it can sound a little awkward in English. And I, I think generally speaking, the English Standard Version does a better job of smoothing that phrasing out in English. And so the English Standard Version is a smoother translation than the NASB. Number three in favor of the ESV is that it is widely used. Uh, and that is a really great advantage. You can go to all different places uh, different churches. And it's interesting, I teach a Christian school Bible class a couple times a week. Uh, and in that class, I actually ask students, which Bible translations do you use? Some of them use the King James, some the New King James, some the NIV. But one of the top translations being used was the English Standard Version. So I know that's anecdotal, but I really think, uh, in my experience, if you go to a lot of places, uh, you'll see the ESV, and that's true if you go to bookstores, it's true if you go to churches and ministries. It just seems like a lot of people are familiar with the ESV and are using the ESV. So it's widely used. I think that's a great thing. Uh, number four, kind of an advantage of the ESV over the NASB, is that the ESV is very accessible. The ESV is available in many wonderful formats and they're very easy to find. I mean, they just have great editions out there and uh, all different formats. The NASB does have various formats, but it's a lot more limited and uh, they are a bit harder to find than the ESV. Now, the NASB, it seems like, is starting to put out more editions. Zondervan came out with some new editions, which is great. But I mean, you have so many wonderful classic formats put out by Crossway and uh, they also have the ESV Study Bible. So the ESV just is not only widely used, it's more accessible in more formats than the NASB. And number five, finally, the ESV is better than the NASB because it's just the ESV. I love how the ESV, uh, it just calls itself the ESV. It's not the ESV 01 and then the ESV 11 and the ESV 2016. Uh, it's just the ESV. Whereas with the NASB, you actually have these different editions that are out there, and that can cause some people to say, well, I like this NASB, or I like that NASB, uh, and it kind of kind of creates confusion too. With the ESV, it's the ESV. Even if they do a minor update, it's still the ESV. And so that's another really good thing about it over the NASB. So those are just some of my thoughts. I'll be talking, as I said, in another video about why the NASB is better than the ESV. So stay tuned for that, and thank you so much for listening to my thoughts from a first perspective.